Theresa May and other top leaders battle to secure agreement with Trump on trade as end of G7 summit looms. Theresa May and other world leaders are pressing Donald Trump for a last-minute agreement on tariffs before he flies out to Singapore to meet with Kim Jong-un. After days of verbal sparring over new U.S. tariffs on steel and aluminum imports, Trump joined the leaders of major nations in an idyllic Canadian resort town. The U.S. president plans to leave Canada several hours early, heading to Singapore for his summit with North Korea's Kim Jong-un. It will mean he misses G7 sessions on climate change, clean energy and ocean protection. On his way to the annual gathering, Trump laid out his fundamental grievance, saying that other countries have been taking advantage of the United States on trade. He also suggested the G7 offer a seat at the table to Russia after the country was ousted from the group after it annexed Crimea. Trump's latest moves build on 18 months of nationalist policymaking, leave him out of step with the globally-minded organization. They have also prompted speculation that the group could fracture into the G6 plus 1. But in meetings with Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and French President Emmanuel Macron, Trump stressed his friendships with the Allies while continuing to insist he wanted to see changes on trade. Trump bantered easily with Trudeau, joking that the neighboring leader had agreed to cut all tariffs and all trade barriers. And he emphasized a good relationship with Macron, saying they sometimes have a little test on trade, but predicting a positive outcome. Still, the fundamental differences remained clear. Trump again railed against trade deficits with other countries and repeated that he may pursue separate trade deals with Canada and Mexico to replace the North American Free Trade Agreement, while Canada would prefer to renegotiate the three-way deal asked if Trudeau was upset that Trump would be leaving the summit in Canada early on Saturday, Trump joked, he's happy. Macron said he and Trump held open and direct discussions, adding that he thought there was a way to get a win-win outcome on trade though details remained unclear. Tariffs are charges which governments can slap on certain goods or products imported into the country. Governments usually try to negotiate minimum tariffs so that goods can be traded freely around the world. This is because for many years most politicians have agreed that free trade leads to greater wealth and makes products cheaper to buy in the shops. But China has massively ramped up the amount of steel it has produced in recent years and dumped it cheaply on the market. This global steel glut has made it far harder for steel industries in other countries to compete, prompting plant closures and job losses. In the U.S. this has sparked widespread anger which has led to Donald Trump imposing his hefty tariffs in a bid to protect the American steel industry. But critics around the world have blasted the move warning this will result in a tit-for-tat trade war which will only push up prices in the long term. And while Mr. Trump has hinted Britain could be exempted from the charges, practically this would be impossible while the UK remains in the EU, which imposes ad receives tariffs as a single trading bloc. There would have to be an EU-wide exemption for Britain to avoid the tariffs. Both sides suggested some progress in NAFTA talks. White House spokeswoman Sarah Huckabee Sanders said they were close to a deal, but added that there was also discussion of shifting to a bilateral deal. A Canadian official said the leaders discussed accelerating the pace of the talks. Trump spent Friday participating in the rituals of the G7, including the formal greeting by host Trudeau, a group photo in front of the sparkling street Lawrence River and a working lunch of Arctic char and buckwheat salad. Other members of the Group of Seven are Canada, France, Italy, Japan, Germany and Britain. The European Union also attends. Trump's relations with the others have hit such a low point that a key question was whether the seven countries can agree on a joint statement of priorities at the conclusion of the meeting. Macron said Thursday on Twitter, The American president may not mind being isolated, but neither do we mind signing a six-country agreement if need be. Trump said Friday he thinks the group will produce a joint statement. Before arriving at the Quebec summit, Trump injected fresh drama by asking why Russia wasn't included in the group. They should let Russia come back in because we should have Russia at the negotiating table, he said. Russia was ousted from the elite group in 2014 as punishment for President Vladimir Putin's annexation of Crimea and support for pro-Russian separatists in Ukraine. In the U.S., 
Special Counsel Robert Mueller is investigating whether Trump's campaign colluded with Russia in a bid to sway the 2016 presidential election in his favor. The comments drew a mixed response. Canadian Foreign Minister Christia Freeland said the issue hasn't been raised around the G7 table, though she said there have been some direct conversations and bilateral meetings. She added there are no grounds whatsoever for bringing Russia with its current behavior back into the G7. In Paris, Macron's office said such a move wouldn't make sense and pointed out that the latest country to impose economic sanctions on Russia was the U.S. Italy's new premier, Giuseppe Conte, tweeted that he agreed with Trump, saying, Russia should go back into the G8. In the interest of all. Russia seems